there's a kind of a fundamental basis for post-traumatic slave syndrome. How many of you are familiar with post-traumatic stress disorder? But when we start talking about chattel slavery, we're not talking about one trauma. We're not talking about a specific event. We're talking about generations of trauma with no intervention. Based on what I know about sugar plantations, tobacco, and the Caribbean, what I know about American chattel slavery and the plantations there, does anyone right now ever recall mental health assistance to slaves? Anybody remember sending in the therapist after I sold off your son, daughter, raped folks? Any, in, at any point? Never. Second question. After slavery was officially over, now you're free. Anybody any remember, remember any therapy then? We know it's been rough, it's been deep for you, it's been difficult, we're gonna do a little group therapy. Anybody remember that? That would be no. Number three, after slavery officially ended, both in the States, in the Caribbean, the British ended, do you remember whether or not trauma continued? Did the trauma continue for people of African descent? I need to know. Okay, so now let's do the math. Hundreds of years of trauma, no treatment. Freed, more trauma, no treatment. What do you do the math? Do you think there may be residual impacts of that trauma? Of course there is. It didn't end, friends, and it hasn't ended yet. So I think one, on one point, African people and people of African descent are extremely resilient. Matter of fact, I think we're a miracle. Far be it for us to pathologize or to look and cast this idea of weak and sick people. Oh, on the contrary, we are I'm profoundly resilient because we've done everything we've done thus far with no help, with not even the ability to have this discussion. As though it were possible, we escaped injury in all those hundreds of years and the years that follow. So this, this kind of journey I'm going to take you on is going to be one that really gives a perspective on what this trauma was, what it looks like, and clinically, what is post-traumatic stress disorder? What does it look like? Now, let me give you a little snapshot. We'll get into it in more depth a little later. But post-traumatic stress disorder, if in fact you are diagnosed with that, Again, remember, direct or indirect trauma. Here are some of the symptoms. A feeling of foreshortened future. Now, what does that mean? A feeling, well, you're not going to live long. How many of you are running into young people that don't believe they're going to make it past their 20s? Feeling of foreshortened future. Exaggerated startle response. Outbursts of anger. Difficulty falling or staying asleep. Hypervigilance. Right? These are symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. This is like DSM stuff, Diagnostic Statistical Manual Mental Disorders. It's in there. And there's a whole listing of all these symptoms. Now, I want to roll it back so you can understand what, I, what the transmission theory is, because I'm going to talk about transmission. So how does a person that's been traumatized by post-traumatic, literally has a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder, and can we, if we are logical and we are reasonable people, assume that a fair number of Africans had to have had post-traumatic stress disorder? You think? I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about them. Untreated, though, right? Okay, so now let's do the math. Mom, who saw dad sold or sister raped, has post-traumatic stress disorder. Still mom though, right? Only mom now has outbursts of anger, feeling of foreshortened future, difficulty falling or staying asleep, hypervigilance, that would be mom. Now Johnny or Mary or Shaquisha does not have, did not have the original trauma, but what are they learning? This is called social learning theory. What am I normalizing? Exaggerated startle response, outbursts of anger. Do, are you following me? So I didn't have to be traumatized. Now, the other thing is, do you think Johnny and Mary got traumatized too? Do you see? So what happens in your environment, you learn from the significant others in your environment. And if they're broken, guess what you're going to be? You're learning from broken people. 
and you're normalizing that behavior. And then it becomes years later, 2008, that's their culture. Studying history in American schools, we learn about the excesses of the Roman Empire, the viciousness of Stalin, Soviet Union, and the brutality of the Nazis. We learn about the barbarity of the Mongols and the cruelty of the Huns. You can easily add to this list the Japanese during World War II and the Viet Cong and the Hutu Nation. Currently, we have Milos, Milosevic, Serbia, Hussein's Iraq, the Taliban, and Osama bin Laden, to name but a few. Certainly, all of those listed above are responsible for their fair share of atrocities. But missing from this list is one society that is responsible for some of the most gruesome crimes against humanity in history, the United States of America. While the powers that be in America are happy to talk about others' crimes, they seem to be reluctant to truly confront their own. With respect to the genocide of the Native Americans and the enslavement and later oppression of those of African descent, the history we in this land learn has been greatly sanitized. And because the history has been sanitized, nothing has truly been done to help what has happened or the trauma to help Af African people, people of African descent with the trauma that we have experienced for over 400 years. And so that is just the opening part I'm reading in chapter three. And the, the title of chapter three is Crimes Against Humanity. And this is my reading of my reading and reviewing of post-traumatic slave syndrome by Dr. Joy DeGru. Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to On the Shoulders of Giants. So I'm just going to jump right in because we're getting into it and we got a lot to get into. So chapter three, Crimes Against Humanity. She's basically getting into what actually happened to us? What caused the post-traumatic slave syndrome? Because the next chapter we're going to get into more, we're going to get deeper into post-traumatic slave syndrome. But right now we're dealing with what happened to black people, the trauma that we experienced. So this may be a tough one because we're, we're really going over the events that actually happened to black people that caused us to have this trauma. So um, just giving you a fair warning, this this may not be an easy video for some of you, but the truth has to be told and we have to under, we have to truly, truly, truly understand what has happened to us. So um, chapter three starts on page 68. My reading started on page 71. Uh, unsanitizing American history. And I'm picking back up on page 73, the Ma'afa. The transatlantic slave trade, referred to as the Middle Passage, marks a period of human trauma rarely equaled. The Middle Passage describes one leg of the triangular, the triangular route of trade that brought captured African men, women, and children to the Americas and enslaved them. Millions were forced onto cargo ships bound for unknown lands that included Brazil, the West Indies, Europe, and the United States, among others. Those people were loaded onto ships and cramped together with sometimes less than 18 inches between them. Here, they would dwell for many weeks to several months in the bowels of the ship. They were deprived of any human comfort and shared in a collective misery. This disgusting place was where they slept, ate, slept, wept, ate defecated, urinated, menstruated, vomit, gave birth, and died. It has been estimated that the millions of Africans that died en route exceeded the number of those killed in the Jewish Holocaust of the 1930s and the 40s. Yet few of us are even aware that this part of African history exists. The first African slaves were captured and brought to Portugal in 1444. The first slaves were brought to North America in 1619, almost 400 years ago. Although slavery has long been a part of human history, American chattel slavery represents a case of human trauma incomparable in scope, duration, and consequence to any other incidents in human enslavement. The fact that the delegation from the United States walked out of the United Nations World Conference Against Racism in August of 2001, a conference that declared American chattel slavery as a crime against humanity only served to highlight America's refusal to acknowledge this period in her own past. 
This transatlantic exploitation is now being referred to as the Black Holocaust or the Ma'afa, which is a Swahili word meaning disaster, calamity, or catastrophe. Up until recently, American historians have been unwilling to confront the realities of this great suffering as, as evidenced by the usual absence of those events from our public school curricula and textbooks. So the Ma'afa, the Middle Passage, was a horrible time, horrible time in human history. Um, <clears throat> and I'm including this with unsanitizing human history because we were not taught about what truly happened to us for a reason. And we have to understand that because we keep asking, why don't they teach our history? Why don't they teach the true history in the schools? It's a part of how you maintain power. You don't empower the people that you want to oppress. You don't empower them. So you teach them what you want them to know so they can remain slaves and or become better niggas, right? So we did not learn about the actual horrors of the Ma'afa, the true horrors of the Ma'afa, or even overall the true horrors that African people, our ancestors endured during slavery on the continent, during the Middle Passage, and when they landed in the various places throughout the world. <clears throat> we were taught a sanitized version of history. We were taught a sanitized version of slavery. Extra sanitized versions of slavery are being taught today. So that is adding to the trauma not being addressed and the trauma not being healed, which in my opinion goes further into how you make a nigga. Because I'm, I'm, and I'm saying it like that for a reason for us to, to stop expecting the powers that be to empower us because if they empower us, they will no longer be the powers that be and they want to maintain their position. They didn't work all these hundreds of years to get this, to get to this point, to just give it away because we want them to give it away. So we have to be realistic about it. So we were not taught about what truly happened to us for a reason. <clears throat> that is why we teach ourselves. That's why we read these books. That's why we find the information ourselves from my research. <clears throat> We have historians that go back to the early 1800s that, that have given us a lot of good information about our past. But it's just up to us to, to use this information now to empower ourselves and to learn from our past so we can create the proper plans to move forward and to help ourselves. But we, we have to know exactly what happened to us so we can know exactly how to heal ourselves. So picking back up on page 74, and uh, a part of the first paragraph. <clears throat> the subject of how many Africans were transported to the Americas along the Middle Passage has been a continuous issue for many scholars. In his 1969 study, The Transatlantic Slave Trade, a census, Philip Curtin placed the number of blacks transported across the ocean at 8 million. Most studies since then have increased this estimate. For example, Hugh Thomas's 1997 work, The Slave Trade, The Story of the Atlantic Slave Trade, 1440 to 1870, puts the number of Africans that, are, that arrived in the, in the Americas at approximately 11 million. More recent studies that have, that have used documented evidence, such as ship manifests, as their basis have placed their estimates between 10 and 15 million. So what we do know is a great number of African people were transported out of the continent and spread throughout the world. But, and I think we're going to read this, but a lot of people don't know. It is believed that if 15 million were transported, 10 million may have died in the process. So understanding the trauma, but also understanding that middle passage, the Ma'afa, being in the bowels of the ships with only 18 inches apart from you. That's why I read that part, so we can get the image in our head with only 18 inches apart from each other. You're laying there ch chained down and 
you're not only lying in your excrements, but you're lying in the excrements of those around you. Those are not the, the human beings should not be in those conditions. Being in those conditions increases your chances of dying, of becoming sick, of becoming weak. So that was a, that was that wasn't even the initial trauma. The initial trauma was being kidnapped. For some people, the initial trauma probably was losing the war and being sold into and be, becoming prisoners of war and then being sold into that and then going through that. It's, it's certain like that it was levels on levels of trauma that our ancestors ex that they experienced, but it didn't stop there. It didn't stop there. So once again, and this is page 75, Life and Bondage, uh, the second paragraph. Once again, let me be perfectly clear about this. Slavery by its very nature is abusive and abhorrent to the human spirit. It was no accident that the state of New Hampshire adopted the motto, live free or die. Freedom means that much to us all. It is detestable that con that constitutions were written and laws were enacted to develop and maintain the institution of slavery. Slaves had not been the simplest of human rights. Excuse me. Ha slaves had not even the simplest of human rights. They were chattel defined as movable items of personal property and as chattel slave owners were free to do with them as they pleased. As noted above, the slave master's right to abuse their own to, to abuse those in their charge were codified with laws such as the Virginia's Casual Killing Act of 1705 and its Unlawful Assembly Act of 1680, which, among other things, made it illegal to kill, made it legal to kill a slave who raises a hand against any Christian. It was in the laws. So now we're talking systematic, systematic racism, systematic oppression. Is codified. Being whipped until skin peeled off, being worked to exhaustion day after day, being beaten, being deprived of food and water, being raped repeatedly, being considered less than livestock and treated worse. Welcome to the life of a slave. 